This video will give you a basic overview of the frame analysis and member design capabilities of the SDS2 engineering software. By far, the biggest advantage of SDS2 engineering is that it uses the same model as the SDS2 detailing software. Even if you're using another software for initial design, this allows you to do a final analysis of the model which will be used to build the structure. There are other advantages of SDS2 engineering, some of which will be covered in this video. The model can be created in either SDS2 engineering, SDS2 detailing, or it can be imported. This model was imported from Revit. The first thing you need to be aware of are the sections for design. This feature allows you to customize the available section sizes for the project. Other software systems select member sizes with no regard for availability or cost. This table also lets you make separate lists for beams, columns, and braces. You can customize it based on things like fabricator inventory, service center inventory, or mill rolling schedule. Or if your project happens to be in a high seismic area, you can include only the sections that are seismically compact. As with anything else, this information can be copied over from job to job. In this particular setup, for beams, I include only the wide flange sections that are available from at least four different producers. This keeps the price per pound low. For columns, I include the wide flange sections that are in the AISC column table and HSS members with non-slender walls. For braces, I include many of the smaller sections from the column tab, plus some WT sections and some angle sizes that are efficient in compression when the long legs are back to back. You can get a copy of the same list if you want. You'll probably want to customize it based on your personal preferences. The next thing you need to be aware of is the member design criteria. Over on the right hand side, you select which design method to use with a member and connection design being the same method. Also, you can choose whether or not to perform a P-delta analysis, and you can choose which method to use. Also, if you would like a more precise analysis, you can tell it to perform a beam depth correction. Remember that this is an accurate model from which the structure will be built. Typically, on a floor, all of the beams have the same top of steel elevation. If this box is checked, when you perform the analysis, it places the beam elements at the beam centerline elevations. This might be important when you have a W24 framing into one side of a column and the W12 framing into the other side with axial load involved. Creating this more accurate model is normally too time consuming with other software. We'll go through a few of the items on the left hand side. The fifth one down is the default deflection ratio. Later, you'll see that this can be changed per load combination or per member. Below that, you can input some of the concrete information for composite design. Below that, you can input information so that camber can be automatically calculated. Currently, it's set up to AISC recommendations. You can change the interaction ratio, formerly known as the stress ratio, to something other than one. Finally, curved beams are designed by breaking them into straight segments, so you can increase that number if you would like a more precise analysis. The next thing you need to be aware of is the load case manager. It comes preloaded with a bunch of default load cases. You may want to delete many of these and add a bunch of your own. To add one, you just click the add button and type in whatever you want to name it. The next thing you need to be aware of is the Load Combination Manager. Since we selected an ASD design method, it gives you a bunch of the ASD load combinations from ASCE 7. Again, you can delete these and add your own. To add one, you just click the Add button. Then you can name it anything you want, but you probably want to name it something that makes sense. Then you can tell it whether or not to check deflection for this load combination. 
If you select Auto, it reverts to the value that you saw in the Member Design Criteria window, which is currently set at L over 360. In this case, we'll tell it to check the deflection for a limit of L over 240. Then over on the right hand side, you select the load cases that are included in the load combination. Then you highlight the ones that have a factor other than one, type in the factor and click apply. As with anything else, load combinations can be copied over from job to job. Once you have all of your load cases and load combinations set up, you can start applying loads. You can easily apply loads from any view in any direction. You first select the load case for which you want to apply the load. To apply an area load, you select the area load add icon over on the left hand side. Then click on the corners of the perimeter of where you want the load to go. Since the Z direction is upward, a downward load would be input as minus 50 pounds per square foot. And for an area load, you need to select either one-way or two-way distribution. Since we selected one-way distribution, we need to tell it which direction to distribute the area load. You do this by selecting any two points in the direction of the distribution. To add a distributed load, you again first select the load case for which you want to apply the load. Then you click on the distributed load add icon. Then you select the start and end points for the load. Then you give it a start magnitude, an end magnitude, and a direction. If you need to add a concentrated load at an odd location, then it's easiest if you first place a construction line at that location. Then click the concentrated load add icon, select its location, and give it a magnitude and a direction. Moment loads can also be added. If you have bracing in your structure that you want to act as tension only bracing, then select those braces, right click and select edit, and mark them as tension only. Whether you build the model within SDS2 or import the model, the default assumption for analysis is that member ends are pinned. If you have any moment beams in your structure, then select them, right click and select edit, and mark major axis moment restraint for each end. For compression and for bending, SDS2 Engineering automatically determines unbraced lengths based on framing condition. However, you can override these values. In this case, we have certain beams that will be fully braced by a floor. However, since there are no intermediate beams framing into these, the software assumes that the unbraced length is the full length of the beam. To override that value, we select these beams, right click, and select Edit. Uncheck the auto box for L sub B, L sub Y, and enter zero to indicate that the beam will be continuously braced along its length. Before analyzing, you need the node number. Do this by clicking the node number icon over on the left hand side. There are some options that you may check or uncheck. After node numbering, you will need to provide global restraints to show how the structure is supported by the foundation. You can easily do this by going to your base elevation. Make sure your depth check is on. Grab all of the nodes, right click, select restrain nodes, and select the appropriate restraints corresponding to your column base conditions. Next, you're going to analyze the structure to determine member forces. Click the analyze icon over on the left hand side. 
Check for structural collapse means that it will check the stiffness matrix before any loads are applied to confirm that the structure is stable. Check the second box if you only want to perform a gravity analysis. Check the third box if you added any diaphragms to your structure. Finally, you have the option of transferring the end reactions as connection forces if you select the load combination to analyze. We have the select all option, but in this case, we'll only select a few. You have the option of factoring up the connection forces by applying a load adjustment factor. Normally, you would leave this at one. However, if you wanted to design the connections for loads 25% higher than the actual end reactions, then you would apply a factor of 1.25. It then gives you a report of the end reactions that were transferred as connection forces. Next, you design the structure to verify and or optimize member sizes. Do this by clicking the design icon over on the left hand side. Then select some of or all of the same load combinations that you selected for analysis. We will select all for the members that we want designed. Next, we'll process and create solids to design the connections and turn everything into solid view. Next, we'll clean up the view by going to our display options and unchecking nodes. Select a load case at the bottom of the screen to see the loads that we applied for that load case. Diagram Viewer allows you to view moment, shear, deflection, and loading diagrams for individual members. Click on the member, right-click, and select Diagram Viewer. Click on Reports to see a listing of all of the different reports available. The one that I'll show you now is the Axial Flexure Interaction Report, which is a nice compact summary report for the structure. Here you see a list of all of the members. The far right-hand column gives the maximum interaction ratio. The third column tells you what load combination caused that maximum interaction ratio. The other columns give specifics as to the location and magnitude of the member forces. Another useful feature is Display Member Stress Level. That icon is over on the right-hand side. This allows you to quickly see which members are highly stressed or failed. Let's double-click on one of the failed members. Over on the left-hand side, you can see that the lightest safe section is a W21 by 44, and the lightest same depth section is a W18 by 55. You can click on the Use button next to the section to quickly change the section size. Or if you prefer not to optimize members individually, then you can optimize the entire structure at once. Under the Analysis Design menu, you have the option to replace all members or just the failed members with either the lightest safe section or the lightest safe section of the same nominal depth. Finally, SDS2 Engineering allows you to create 2D drawings from your model. You can adjust these options to suit your preferences. Then the drawings are automatically created. Today I only showed you the basic functionality of how the software works. It has more features such as the ability to calculate transfer forces, 
dynamic analysis capabilities, automatic wind load calculations, and the ability to import loads from a spreadsheet. If you would like to learn more about SDS2 Engineering, please contact us.